Hi guys, it's Ashley and today's video is going to be all about what I read in August. This is not nearly all of them, but what I found was that in August I seem to favor my Kindle more than anything. So, um, welcome to my August wrap up. Excuse the mess behind me. Don't have time to deal. Um, let's go ahead and jump into how I felt about these books. I am going to start from lowest rated and move on to the good stuff at the end. Let's get into it. Okay, so first I had, I believe this was a Kindle early reader. I read Black Nowhere by Reese Hirsch. Um, and this was, I'll insert a photo of the cover here, but this was basically, it was a crime novel and he takes you through the point of view of the FBI agent and the criminal. Um, my issue with this book, I did give it two stars. I didn't have any one stars this month, so that's good. But this book was honestly really close to being one star. And so was my second, the, my, the next book I talk about. That was also two stars. Okay. But they were really close to being one stars. Um, the problem was I did not like either of the characters at all. I thought they were both deplorable people. Um, <laughs> and it's not that I can't like a book if I don't like the character, but they weren't even, you know, those hate to love characters. I just didn't like them. The FBI agent was whiny and sad. Um, now granted it did touch a little bit on the fact that she has depression, but like, that's all she talked about at all. It's like, you really could get a little more. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then, you know, the, the criminal, the POV with the criminal, he like, I didn't, I wasn't rooting for him either. I thought he was a cocky jerk. Um, for lack of a better way to put it, he was a major douchebag and not like a hate to love him kind of way. Like he was just straight up a douchebag. There were, I, he had no redeeming qualities in my opinion. Um, so I didn't enjoy reading about the characters. And then the actual like plot itself um, has to, it, without any spoilers, like basically this is a retelling of the whole Silk Road situation. So it didn't feel very creative either. Um, Overall, the only reason I gave it two stars instead of one is because his writing style and technique, I do think that there is talent there. I just didn't like the story and I didn't like the characters. <laughs> so there's that. But would I attempt reading another book by him? Possibly. Um, I would really heavily consider the synopsis of said book before I jumped into it. I just, I think that, I think that the author has talent, it has talent there. It just was not. done well. <laughs> okay, my next two star book, and this is a hugely, hugely, hugely unpopular opinion uh, <laughs> from what I can tell. Um, so don't come for me, but I gave two stars and again, barely gave two stars to Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. This book irritated me to no end. The only reason it got an additional star and did not sit at one star was because the twists caught me by surprise. Um, so I bumped it up a star for that because it, I did not see them coming. Um, and that is something that I look for in a thriller, but everything else about this book irritated me. Um, this, this book is about a nanny who goes to work for a family in the Scottish Highlands who has four little girls and they live in a smart house and weird stuff starts happening with the house. And basically you start off the story. She is writing to her, uh, to her potential lawyer. She's in prison for the murder of one of the children. Um, so that's where we start off and it's all written in the letter format. I will say that Ruth Ware does a really good job of not making you forget that you're reading letters, which I appreciate because when I started this book, I was like, Oh Lord have mercy. No. Please don't. Please don't make me read letters the entire time. I don't want to. Um, the problems with this book are that 
nothing happens until the last 30 pages of the book. I mean, really nothing happens. Um, yeah, the house does some glitchy stuff, but in all honesty, I didn't feel the suspense. I didn't feel, I didn't feel any sort of like anything really I felt like we were just going through a nanny's day-to-day -day, like normal stuff taking care of kids um and even then she's a terrible nanny <laughs> I'm sitting here reading this book as a mother thinking oh my word I that girl would be fired like just little things so fired um <laughs> So, and then there's like little things that just don't even matter, like, at all to the plot. And then I can't even, I can't even express without spoiling it how irritating the very last, like, three pages were for me that probably ruined all of it. Like, I, no, only got two stars because it surprised me and that was it. Other than that, I didn't like anything about this book. I didn't like the characters wasn't upset by the death. I wasn't anything. This was a big dud for me. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about my three star books. Just so you know, three stars does not mean that the book wasn't good. It just means that it was fine. Um, doesn't mean that it was bad. It doesn't mean that it was great. It was just fine. Um, so first up, this was another um, Kindle early reader for me. How did I do that? Maybe it wasn't an early reader. Maybe it was just on my Kindle. I was going to say, I usually only get one of those a month, so I don't, I don't remember. But it was Forgotten Bones by Vivian Bars. And this was a pretty good thriller. Um, I will say this one was, it was almost a four star book, actually. Um, there were just, there were some pieces of the plot that were just very, pointless, I guess, or little like pieces of the story that I felt like could have been pulled out and would have affected nothing. Um, and that kind of bugs me. It, I didn't feel like it drove there. Some of these pieces drove like character development. They didn't drive the plot forward. They didn't really do anything, but basically the, uh, and that's the only reason it got knocked down to a three star, but the gist of this story is that we have a local cop and a schizophrenic teacher, <laughs> professor, college professor. Um, and basically the a cop comes across a body that was killed like a long time ago. Um, and then they start searching, you know, the, the land, the farm that this body was found on and, um, continue to find more bodies. Well, the schizophrenic professor starts to see things in his schizophrenic state um and they come together to you know solve this solve this crime overall i mean it did it grasped my attention i loved i loved 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 the fact that one of the characters was a was someone who has schizophrenia but had learned how to live with it that was really interesting to me um i i just i i really really was captivated by the story i again think that it got wrapped up a little too quickly and it was a little too predictable for me like I kind of knew what was going to happen but overall it was a pretty solid book and I would read another one of her books in a heartbeat so um I am giving it a three because there were some there were some bad along with the good okay so there was there was some bad along with the good but overall the book the book was a it was good it was good moving on okay another book this was one that I listened to on audible but it was a questionable friendship by Samantha March and this is another one that was good um, it wasn't great but it was good um, now had you asked me about halfway through the book how I felt my answer would have been different uh, I was not anticipating loving well I shouldn't say love liking this book at the halfway point. At the halfway point, I was like, oh my gosh. Really? 
But then all of a sudden, halfway through the book, the characters, all of a sudden they gained depth and the friendship turned into something I could understand. And then I honestly got super emotionally attached um, to one of the characters in particular and ended up just crying my eyes out. <laughs> so the reason why this one gets three stars is because, now granted, this is one of her earlier novels. I have not read her more recent ones, but I have, I have, I did read her debut novel, and then I read this one, which was a couple years later, and I can see the growth for the author, which is really, really cool, um, and I'm hoping that that growth continues, so I am looking forward to picking up another one of her books, um, because I can, I can see the growth in her writing. Um, with that being said, the writing, I think, still needs a little, little bit of work, but again, it was just, you could, it, she made so much progress as an author from her debut that you could just, you can tell she's going to, you know? Um, like I said, the first half was a little bit rough for me. Um, I didn't understand why I cared about these people, <laughs> or why I should care about them for that matter. Sorry, I am so sick. <sighs> But then, like I said, all of a sudden it just took a turn and I was invested and was in there with them and wanted, and I, I will also say that Chiclet's not typically, you know, my go-to and that's what this is for sure. Um, but I, I'm, I, again, it, it's definitely a three star. It, it, any, any time I get... I'm so emotionally invested that I actually cry reading a book is that that means something that means that means something for sure um so I am kind of excited to pick out pick up some of her newer books and see how much her ability has grown even since that one so there's that okay and now on to my four star books which I think were all on my Kindle. So editing me is gonna have a lot of fun inserting cover art here. So first one for four was Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. This one wasn't on my Kindle. I actually borrowed it from a friend um, and it was really good. Um, the only reason, it probably was more of like a 4.5. The only reason it didn't get a full five stars is because there were little things that were missing for me and that was, I wanted a little more description and I understand why he did it. I get it. I understand like there wasn't a lot of description about the main character, um, so that you could try and like insert yourself into it. I get that. It's just not my thing. Um, I wanted to like be able to more visually picture this. However, what he did right was first off, he surprised me. Riley Sager surprised the hell out of me. I did not see that ending coming. I mean, I saw some stuff coming and then everything I thought I knew changed. Um, and I was on edge the whole time I was reading it. Um, I wasn't really scared. So there's that. I get that it's not, it's a thriller, not a horror, but usually I really like for those to even kind of like make me think twice about reading it before bed, you know? Um, and it didn't quite get that, which is another reason why I docked it at least half a star. Um, but overall it was really good. And I've actually already purchased another book by Riley Sager, um, to read, but I'm going to save it for October. <laughs> so anyway, moving on. The next four star book I did read on my Kindle and it was The Beginning of Everything by Robin Schneider. By the time I decided to read this book, it was messy because I needed a little bit of a change. I needed a change from the thrillers and this definitely gave it to me. This was definitely a YA contemporary with a little bit of romance in it. Um, the I really enjoyed it. I read it really quickly. I loved, you know, the high school setting. I really did. Um, I thought it was a little stereotypical. I don't remember high school exactly being that way, but everyone remembers high school differently, right? Whatever. Um, but it's 
basically it's set in a Southern Californian public high school setting. You've got, you know, the pop popular kids, you've got the cool nerdy kids, you've got, you know, the football jocks, you've got all these, all these little cliques, right? Um, and basically our main character goes from being one of the popular cool kids to having this terrible accident which led him to not being able to play sports anymore and kind of throwing him into this awkward where do I fit in now stage. Um, so part of what I loved about this book so much was that I don't think a lot of high schoolers actually get to go through this, but I, I, I do think at some point everyone does go through this awkward where do I fit in stage in their life and it was just really cool to kind of see it portrayed. Um, I did dock it a star because I do think that the author was kind of trying to be a little more deep than the book really was. Um, I got that vibe. It, there, there were pieces of it that seemed very pretentious. I mean the book ended with an Oscar Wilde quote. It would, you know, cringe. Um, but everything else about it, I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the characters. I enjoyed the romance. It was a little weird. It, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything about it. It, but you know, like it was, I, I don't know if weird's the right word. It was, I don't know, not typical romance, but there were some things that were thrown into it that I was just like, well, where'd that come from? Um, and why did I need it? But, but overall, this was a really solid, like, young adult contemporary read and I, I really appreciated it for what it was. I would recommend it. Definitely a solid four stars. And now on to my five star books. Um, my first one was another Kindle read and it was a series or the beginning of the, of a series by Kendar Blake. It was um, Three Dark Crowns and <laughs> again I went into this thinking it's gonna be okay it's just another you know YA fantasy series no big deal I was so wrong I was so wrong about the fact that it was just gonna be okay first off um, this this book is like just this little like this darkness to it and Man, it had me. It, it had me. It had me so much I went out and bought the second one. Um, but it takes place on this island, this magical island of Fenburn. And this island has always had this um, t tradition where they've had a matriarchal society, so they always have a queen. Um, and the queen always gives birth to triplet daughters, right? Um, and then when the triplet daughters come of age, they have to basically fight each other for the throne to the death. Um, so they're all trying, they all get separated by, I think they were like six years old. They all get separated and go off to these perspective, like areas of the island. Each area has like different magical properties. Um, and each sister has an aptitude for said magical property. Um, and first off, the ending caught me completely off guard. The very, very end. I won't spoil it, of course, but there's this little twist at the end where I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what just happened? Um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited to pick up the next one. Um, overall, I was completely shocked by how much I love this book. I was not expecting it to be as good as it was at all. I would highly recommend it. I really enjoyed reading it and I can't wait to pick up the second one. So there we go. Okay. The next one was another one that I listened to on Audible and it was An Echo in the Bone by Diana Gabaldon. Um, and it is book seven in the Outlander series. Um, I can't say too terribly much about the book itself without spoiling the other six. Um, so I won't say too much, just know that I love this series. I love historical fiction and I love fantasy and this has a little, has a lot of historical fiction with a little bit of fantasy in it. Um, 
I also pretty much love anything set in Scotland. I mean, it's the land of my people. <laughs> um, but it is so well written, so unbelievably well researched, the whole series. It has a romance that is epic. It's so epic. There are good parts, there are bad parts, there are violent parts, but it is epic in proportion. Um, the things these people go through are absolutely insane, yet they still find solace in each other. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so I'll go ahead and leave it at that because I don't want to spoil anything, but I do love the entire series. This book was no different. Um, I don't know what to say without spoiling it. <laughs> so I'm not going to say anything. Just know that it's fantastic. The whole series is fantastic. Highly recommend it to anyone who likes historical fiction on a, or, or an epic romance and is okay with it with violence and stuff because it, it's there for sure. Okay, another book I finished was Lord of Chaos by Robert Jordan. This is book six in the Wheel of Time series. This is a reread for me. I have read this series multiple times and absolutely love it. Um, quite possibly, in my opinion, the best fantasy series of all time. Um, I have not read, um, don't come for me, I have not read Lord of the Rings since I was a child. Whereas I've read this like multiple times as an adult. So I'm standing by that at the moment, but I think I should just for argument's sake probably reread Lord of the Rings before I 100% stand by that opinion. But as of right now, I love this series. It's one of my favorites. I It's probably the series that really pulled me into fantasy and loving fantasy the way that I do. Um, and this book is no different. This book is fantastic. I mean, they're all fantastic, to be honest. There's a little bit of a slump um, in some of like the later books, but I still love them. I know there are so many people who read these books and are like, oh my gosh, we could have done like without books seven through 10. And I'm like, no, I need them. I need them in my life still. I don't care. So um, yeah, this is again, it's in the middle of series. Can't really say anything more about it except for that it is more of a classic fantasy series where there is, you know, the savior and the dark one and he's, you know, gotta figure out how he's gonna save the world basically with his friends. So it is, it is more of that classic fantasy trope, but it is done so well and so beautifully and I love it, love it, love it. Okay, another one that was a reread for me, but it had been so many years since I read it, I just couldn't help myself. Um, and it was Life of Pi by Jan Martel, and it is still a five-star book. It is so beautiful and tragic, and I, I can't even, I can't even, I can't even put words to how I feel about this book, but the gist of it is, it is about a teenage boy from India who, whose parents own, they own a zoo and they are relocating to Canada. And in order to do so, they get on a ship, a freight, a freight ship. What are they, a freighter? Is that what they call those? I don't remember. Um, with their animals in our off, right? Um, Along the way in the Pacific, the ship sinks. He, the, you know, the, the boy doesn't know why. Um, his name is Pi. It's actually Piscine, but he goes by Pi. Um, and he, he doesn't know what happened. All he knows is that he survived. Um, and he is in a lifeboat. And this is about his survival in the Pacific Ocean and a lifeboat with a Bengal tiger. And how they make it across the Pacific Ocean. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, and I love it. I, I, I can't even just go read it. 
go read it and you will understand. I don't know even how to put anything about my feelings with this one into words. It is, it is still, still a five star book for me and it's fantastic and completely worth any bit of hype ever. I never saw the movie, don't know what that's like. The book is phenomenal. Okay, and then last but not least, another one that really surprised me. I had high hopes for it in the sense that the cover is absolutely stunning, but this is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. And I was expecting a, maybe a four star book, but man, what is not to love about a fantasy novel where your heroine is a librarian? I mean, really? <laughs> So basically this book takes us through the story of Elizabeth who is a librarian and um, some pretty shady stuff starts happening. This is set in a very magical, whimsical world. It almost reminds me of Harry Potter to be honest because it's so whimsy and I love it. Um, and so basically some stuff happens and she ends up teaming up with a sorcerer named Nathaniel. and. They have to kind of come. To, they have to. They have to come together and like stop the the big bad from happening, right? Um, but first, they have to figure out what it is and what's happening and why. Um, the big part of this one for me was like this has. So this story has demons in it, and the demons are evil, right? Um, they're inherently, they're inherently evil, but they're linked to sorcerers and therefore can't really be evil because they're under the control of the sorcerer, if that makes sense. Um, unless the sorcerer is of course evil. And what this book did for me that made it a five star was it blurred the lines of good and evil. It really did. And not only did it blur the lines of good and evil, but it showed how people could cross those lines well not people or entities or whatever could cross those lines whether it being you know you could you could be a bad person and cross the line into doing amazingly good things or you could be doing these horrendously awful things but completely convinced that you're the good person you're the hero of the story when really you're really not um so it just it she did it so well. I'm I'm still floored. I, I loved this book so much that I actually made my sister read it while she was here visiting. So, and she loved it too, just for the record. Highly recommended. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Can't say enough about it. Go read it. So anyway, that pretty much wraps up what I read in August. Um, I did read 11 books um, in the month of August. So hopefully I can keep that momentum going and hit my reading goal for the year. So, um, I hope you enjoyed. If your opinion's differ than mine, that's fine. I'm not here to be, you know, to hurt anyone's feelings or anything like that. These are just my opinions. Please keep that in mind. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like me, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified of my uploads, hit the notification bell. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in my next one.